confident that our next special guest will think that I'm very rational. And our next special guest has a very special introduction that you may remember. On a mountaintop high above a large city stands the headquarters of a man devoted to the cause of freedom and justice. A private citizen who is dedicating his life to the struggle against evil men everywhere. Captain Midnight. That's right. Captain Midnight himself, the great Steve Summer. Schmooze, how you been? Well, we, uh, we're we doing okay. But uh, let me just uh, throw this out because I, I heard Paris. And recently, my wife and I were in Paris. Oh, oh, nice. And if we were in Paris the same time the Brooklyn Nets were, we still would have gone to the Louvre. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I will say this. If you ever get to France to begin with, especially Paris, don't order French fries. They're terrible. Uh, they're <laughs> called palm frites. They call yeah. them palm frites. <laughs> Let me just say this about the Rogers and uh, uh, Hamill uh, situation. Uh, I think everyone has missed the point. Hamill really uh, offering and sending out the worst insult between the two of them insulting each other, because what Hamill had to say insulted a, a, an awful lot of hamsters. When he called uh, Rogers a hamster brain quarterback, you know how many hamsters were offended by that. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, I think you mean Kimmel, right? right. Jimmy Kimmel. Kimmel. Yeah, yeah they're right. <laughs> oh, what do I, I'm saying, Hamel. It's, it's yeah. okay. It's yeah, all right. It's, so Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah. So do but, you uh, do you travel yeah. the world now, Steve? You went to Paris yeah. recently. Where else have you been heading to? Yeah, well, well, that was my wife's idea, and so I, you know, was taken along for the ride. I'm not into museums. I'm not really into being a tourist, but it was an experience, that's for sure. But you did go to the Louvre, you said, and did you see the Mona Lisa? Yeah, well, I did. She looks a lot better uh, in person uh, <laughs> than any kind of portrait of her, that's for sure. Would you be interested in going to London, England to see the Mets take on the Phillies in the middle of June next season, Steve? <laughs> yeah, that. Why, why are they doing that? And why, and why are the Brooklyn Nets playing in Paris? Well, so that no one pays attention to them there, too. I mean, just to make it very even. I, yeah. I, I honestly don't know. It's like international football. I mean, why do we stick games in London? Why do we stick games all over the place? They try to grow now, the sport. Well, I guess the, the Nets are looking for a French correction. <laughs> <laughs> I like what you did there. The French connection. You young guys don't know what that's all about, but that's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> well, I'm Steve. glad he made you laugh, TK. <laughs> oh, I mean, I got, got it. I like that one. <laughs> uh, Steve, um, what do you think of the Mets so far this offseason? Have you been disappointed with what they've done? Um, with uh, with what? Who's done? What the Mets have done? Like, have they done enough well, for you to think it, they're good? It, well, uh, you know that remains to be seen. But I've not been excited by what they've done. Uh, you know, you would have loved to have gotten, of course, you know, uh, the the best of uh, Japan and and certainly the, uh, Matt Chapman. I mean, Beatty. You know, listen, he shows potential, but I, I would love to see the Mets get. A third baseman who's been a gold glover is hitting wasn't so hot this past year, but I'd love to see the Mets get Matt Chapman, and they need to get, they certainly could use another outfielder. The one thing I don't like about Bader, and I said this when I was still working Monday through Friday, and that was his mouthpiece. <laughs> it reminded me of Hannibal Lecter. The guy, you know, it, it's one thing if you see Stephon Curry with the mouthpiece, he chews on the end of it, and it looks like a mouthpiece. But when, when Bader does that, you get the impression you're looking at Hannibal Lecter with the teeth, <laughs> the whole thing being shown, just an awful, awful optic. So I hope as a Metropolitan that he keeps that mouthpiece where it's supposed to be. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in his mouth. I think he probably grinds his teeth, especially when he's stressed. So he's probably <laughs> putting it in there to protect the enamel on his teeth. That that would be my guess. Yeah, that well, that's a good guess. <laughs> <laughs> I, and, and I hope that's the case also. <laughs> I get the sense, Steve, that you're not a big Aaron Rodgers fan, based on what you were saying earlier. Would you? Well, would you... Is, uh, I mean, a surefire first ballot Hall of Famer. 
But, I mean, all of the BS that he wants to see come to an end, it has to start with him. The whole thing, and, and maybe he did not say Kimmel is a is a, a, a pedophile, but he certainly implied it. And, of course, he didn't apologize. What was it yesterday on the program? But now he's not going to be on that program anymore during the course of the football season. He ought to just stick, if he can, uh, to football, not COVID, not vaccines, not UFOs, uh, <laughs> and not uh, not any late night uh, TV guys. Just stick to football and shut up. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking to the won't leg- be happy about that. The legendary Steve Summers. Steve, I want to play a clip for you and for the entire audience because this clip okay. you know, right. is one of the great. They really, I think this exemplifies WFAN. Well, let me guess what it's going to be. Can I guess? Of course. You're more than welcome to. It's the Daryl Strawberry thing. It's not the Daryl Strawberry oh. thing. No, it's not. But no. good guess. That was a very good guess. I have a okay. lot of audio say for this beautiful day, but it's a caller because we are the fan. So as much as people love you and Joe and Mike and Chris, and you guys are great. I grew up listening to all of you. Sometimes yeah. the caller would become the star, and you did such a great job of enhancing that caller into becoming an even bigger star. And the guy yeah. I'm thinking about is Jerome in Manhattan. Oh, for sure. And one of his great phone calls that he made to you. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't had the pleasure, we present <laughs> to you Jerome <laughs> in Manhattan. Picture a man sitting alone in his room. No family, no friends, just a phone in the sports section. A man obsessively pondering the fate of the Yanks, Jets, and Knicks. His is a dimension of sight, of sound, but of no mind. There's a rubber room up ahead. You're entering the Jerome Zone. Steve, I am not a happy Yankee fan tonight. They won, Jerome. I know they won. I want to talk about Brian Cashman here. All right. Turn off that song, because I'm not in a good mood. Well, see, as soon as you say that, you get Ray Martell on the other side of the glass, who's a big Red Sox fan. What is Cashman doing letting Jermaine Dye go to Oakland? (laughs) Now they're going to win the World Series. Will you stop? What, there's another... They need or not... When is he going to realize that justice is aging more than they're saying? I read an article today that justice... Is not even taking batting practice now. Would you take uh, Dimitri Young? No. Would you? He said they're w- not going to trade him. Would you take? Well, you don't know if that's a no. That's very possible. Dimitri Young could be gone. Sean Casey could be gone. Uh, Pokey Reese uh, could be gone. Uh, that they need a bat for the outfield. Who's going to replace O'Neill next w- year? Would and you- who's going to replace Nabilak? W- do you remember that phone call, Steve, by chance? That's fantastic. Uh, there, there were so many like that. What, what the, this particular phone call reminds me of, he, Jerome used to complain uh, with or without medication that he was on. <laughs> he, used to, he used to complain about Yankee parades along uh, the Canyon of Heroes. Oh, geez. About who was in which car and because uh, so-and-so wasn't in the first car. And uh, he was complaining. The Yankees would win a World Series. And, of course, he had something to complain about the whole thing. So uh, th- this is so typical. It's a good choice on your part because it's so typical of Jerome from Manhattan, who in his own way was entertaining as any caller I had over those 34 years. But but think about this. Tiki, Steve, he was ahead of his time. Mm-hmm. He was complaining about Brian Cashman, and we're still doing it 20-plus yeah. years later. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I, – I, his cousin uh, kept in touch with me regarding his health, and he had a number of health issues. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, and, yeah, and I don't think he's with us anymore, but – I wish he was, and I wish he was still calling uh, the radio station because he was, as I say, as entertaining as can be. Yeah, you bring up an interesting point about callers because we, I don't think we take them for granted, but sometimes you don't realize unless you've been doing it for a long time that it's it's the same people calling, right? You end up developing a relationship. I haven't quite done that yet on 
on WFAN, Steve, because I've only been on WFAN <laughs> for two years. Sure. I was on the national network for a long time, and we hardly got calls. But <laughs> but on WFAN, you get calls. People call you well, like regularly. Oh, yeah. They become somewhat friendly with you. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, well, philosophically, the key to being a good talk show host is also being able to listen. The maybe the, the record holder for most calls to the station, uh, without getting on uh, as many times as he would call during the day was Joe from Staten Island. Mm. Uh, and uh, he, at one time, I think we were in the neighborhood of him calling. He wanted to be on all the programs every single day. And so he was calling from early in the morning until late night and overnight. And at one point, uh, again, give or take, he may have called the radio station in a 24-hour period more than 1,200 times. <laughs> Jeez, that's unbelievable. <laughs> it almost feels not mathematically possible. All right. My God. <laughs> Steve, I, I'm curious because, and I remember this as a kid listening, as much as it pained me, because I don't like the New York Rangers, and you do, and you became, in a lot of yeah. ways, the voice of the Ranger fan. Yeah. Um, after... Well, I, yeah, go ahead. You know, the uh, hockey, I mean, nobody wanted... Certainly, Mark Chernoff didn't want us to talk hockey at all, boomer notwithstanding. <laughs> but 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 uh, it was listen when you have nine teams, three hockey teams. How could you ignore uh, the kind of history that certainly the Rangers have had, and uh, and the Devils coming in the what eighty eight eighty nine, and uh, and and of course the Icelanders. That, and it was a great rivalry that went really kind of unnoticed, or certainly not by the hockey fan, but by the general WFAN audience. So we did all that shtick with, you know, ducks and geese and chicks better scurry when I take you out of Missouri. And the whole thing between urban and rural and old country road and Broadway and the history of the Rangers and and uh, what uh, history the Icelanders had, and uh, their uniforms that reminded you of Gordon's fish sticks and <laughs> Mike Bassey and and uh, Sturgeon, and uh, I mean I just had so much fun. And in the very beginning, it was very controversial, and uh, there were death threats uh, that I was getting in the mail, not emails at the time because there wasn't emails at the time in the early uh, in the late 80s and early very early 90s so the the bottom line was uh it was uh, Icelander fans were really uh, taking it well, all the heart would you have you have you been to UBS arena since it opened up the new islander home no no i have because uh, i could tell you right now diehard islander fan Sal Licata has like an in with Mr. Ledecky, I think he would take it. You could sit in the suite with the Islanders owner, and maybe after all these years, he can convert you like they did Sal. What do you think of that, Steve? <laughs> well, first of all, they should be at the mausoleum. That's the real home. <laughs> and, and, you know, whether it was Belmont or what you want to call it now, where they play, and, and also they're not as good a team so far as the New York Rangers, which is – See, all this has to do with, you know, staying out of the penalty box and, and the Icelanders don't have the kind of offense that they wish they had. The Rangers have the offense, but uh, they have lapses defensively and uh, they're in the penalty box a little bit too much, but they're a very good team. The whole thing is uh, stay healthy, get contributions from all four lines by the time uh, it seems like a hundred years from now, when you get into the postseason, where it really matters and really counts, and where uh, more people are going to be paying attention than right now. But but hockey should not be ignored. That's for sure. Damn right. By the way, this is very important. Um, we, Chris Russo chimed in on it. I think every legend who comes on mm -hmm. certainly should chime in on it. And that is, do you think Tiki Barber's a Hall of Famer? <laughs> <laughs> do you think Tiki's a Hall of Famer, Steve? Just so you know, oh, uh, oh, yeah, just absolutely. so you know, d dog yeah, call me right. borderline. <laughs> and once Coughlin told him to carry the football along the sideline in I, the other arm. Right, high and tight. 
He was great. Yeah, uh, I mean, thank you. Yeah, I think uh, the brothers in the Hall of Fame, he should be in the Hall of Fame. Why not? I feel you. Thank you, Steve. There you go. Thank you very much. Hey. Yeah, ter- a terrific running back. I had no question about it. Exciting. And uh, was able to move the chains, as we say in the trade. That's for sure. Steve, uh, it's an honor to always talk to you. I'm glad you're still a part of the station. I've heard you on with Keith. You're a legend. I grew up listening to you. And thank you very much for coming on this Throwback Thursday. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you. Thanks for thinking of me. Thanks for having me. And continued success, you two guys. You thank guys you. are terrific. Appreciate you, Appreciate Steve. it. The great Steve Summers, the schmoozer himself. By the way, going back to that Jerome clip. What I do find so funny about it is that that clip was from 2001. It was from 2001. It was 2001. 2001. What had just happened that he was upset about? Well, the Yankees won the World Series in 2000. Right. They were about to win the pennant in 2001. They lost the brutal World Series. But I couldn't follow him. He was mad mad about the Red Sox? That the A's signed Jermaine Dye. They're going to win the World Series. They did not win the World Series. 